Hi, in this video I'm going to really briefly run through a process that I oftentimes use for portrait commissions. Now obviously in a portrait commission one of my main goals is to get a likeness of the sitter. And this process allows me to compartmentalize, which works really well for my personality. So I start off with an underpainting, which is normally raw umber and white, and I work on composition and shapes, and then I can let that dry up. And then I can take that underpainting and work on top of it with color. Uh, there will always be adjustments to shapes, as you will see, but I can feel really confident that I've got a solid foundation to work upon. In the first image, I've transferred a drawing onto the canvas. The linen has received a tone of raw umber, which has been allowed to dry. I now go over the transfer lines and mass in the shadows with more raw umber, and I let this dry. In the second image, I'm turning my attention to the lights, and I'm applying Kremnitz white over the whole area. I'm trying to keep this very thin. In fact, at the end of the session, I may go back in and scrape down with a palette knife. So this is the completed underpainting. It's received multiple coats of Kremnitz white very thinly applied, no texture. I'm definitely looking to understand the shapes. I'm not looking to match value for value. I want to make everything lighter than it appears. And the reason for this is that when I go in later and apply semi-transparent and transparent colors to certain areas, I can use that lightness to achieve a glow. Here I begin to apply the first layer of color over the underpainting. I also key the painting by placing my darkest dark. This right here is the completed first layer of color over the underpainting. It's very thin. I apply the paint with a brush and then use my fingers to actually push the color into the surface. Things are moving forward. I'm adjusting shapes, for instance, the forehead and chin. Just a side note, when I paint, I only oil out the areas that I'm working on typically. So you'll see here that the hair is really sunken in. So here's one of those times when I'm so happy that I paint thinly. The painting's gone wrong, the drawing's off, but because there's not a lot of paint built up on the surface, I can easily correct the shapes. I'm refinding the shapes. I'm doing a better job at describing the planes. I'm playing with the collar and exaggerating the light that bounces from the collar onto the chin and neck. I've changed the background color. The painting's overall temperature is much cooler now. Ear day. Ears are complex and they need their own day. Shapes are becoming set and I'm building more texture. I've applied thicker paint to the collar and to the hair, as well as to the highlights on the forehead, nose, and cheekbone. Here's where having a lighter base value really helps. I apply a transparent red over an area of the nose that has dried, and the result is chromatic. I'm a very slow painter. It takes me quite a while to get my shapes and coloration to be where I want them to be. So my natural inclination 
is to scrape down with a palette knife after each painting session. Uh, this leaves enough of an image but removes any kind of buildup. And what I realized eventually was after many, 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 many layers, uh, the colors seem to play together nicely and create a bit of a complexity on the surface. So I feel like I took something that was a shortcoming in that I am very slow to get shapes and coloration and it turned into an asset. So I always tell my students to try to do the same thing. Find out what they're not so good at and make that a positive. And that's the process. Thanks so much for watching.